This is the Asus Xonar D2 and it has an outstanding digital to analog converter on it. And it doesn't even have one of them on board, it has four. So how good is it? Let's find out in this video. Now the Asus Xonar D2 was released back in 2007, so it makes it 13 years old. Uh, the card itself is targeted at the gaming and entertainment segment of the market, but if you look at a bit more closely, it's really meant for the movie market. Why? Well, if it was a more of a gamer market, you would have an, a headphone amp or a dedicated headphone amp. Uh, which isn't there. Also, the front panel connector would be present, which isn't, and also the presence of GSX 2.0. Now, GSX 2.0 isn't of any use these days because no system anymore uses EAX 4.0 or anything like EAX. So it's more for the movie market, and you can see that because it uses Dolby Digital and DTS Connect. Now, there are some th things that, well, it's more gamer marketed, uh, that's the RGB and the lighted uh, jack plugs, but I'll get back to that a bit later on. And this is what I mean with those cool light effects that you have on this sound card. This is what happens when you pop it on. And this is what happens when you just turn it off. It's not a lot of lighting, but it is there. And this is what happens when it doesn't have the EMI shroud. It's this lighting that, well, causes the effect. And this is what happens when you turn on the system with the jack blocks. And that's a cool effect, isn't it, people? Now the manual says it has an output signal to noise ratio of 118 decibels and a total harmonic distortion of 0.0004%. But we'll see if we, if we reach that number in my test. It uses the AV200 and it has a couple of Burr Brown PCM1796 digital to analog converters and a CS5381. But what does that mean in real life? Well, first off, the AV200 is the, well, the brother or sister of the AV100, with the main exception that the AV200 has DTS Connect. Now, the AV100 and the AV200 are both essentially the CM8788, which is also used in the Xonar Essence ST, the Xonar DX, the, well, a lot of other cards. There may be some others, but a lot of cards use the C Media 87, 88, 86. The four Burr Brown digital to analog converter, which is a 24 bit, 192 kilohertz advanced segmented audio stereo digital to analog converter and that is the need the reason why you want four of those on a card because they're only stereo so you want one for the front for the center for the sides the rear the subs it's a nice solution to have four burr browns on there the Sears logic or the cs5381 is an analog to digital converter that is used in a lot of systems the DJ100 is a CMI9780 AC79 chip, which is just a preamp for the microphone input. When you look overall on this card, it is very similar to the Essence ST, but I've done a video about that card, so take a look at that one. Now, that's an impressive data sheet. Let's see what the driver is like. And this is what the driver interface looks like. We have several DSP settings, which you can turn on and off. Music, movies, gaming, not gaming, GSX, and everything else. You have a nice pop-up screen. Now it's interesting to see that there is some Dutch in there as well as English. There's no way you can, well, set the main language for this. So, well, I just left it where it was, but I think you'll understand what it means. An or telephone is a headphone or earphone. That's the right translation. 
Uh, there's some mystery buttons there and you can set your Dolby Digital or DTS. Now I did try to use the DTS Neo and I was well kind of well amazed that it sort of worked to create a more well 3D surrounding. You have your mixer and your karaoke, your flex bass, which is interesting if you have a separate subwoofer audio uh, cancellation and the vocal effects. Now the Asus Sonar D2 is actually just a, well, a 5.1 sound card. It isn't really meant for use with a headset. Of course, you can still set it up for a headset, but there is no headphone amplifier on it. And so I just hooked my, my, well, I did use my headphone because I don't have a 5.1 system available here for testing. And I tested it out because, well, that's why you have a sound card, don't you? And, well, it was a really pleasant listening session. I really enjoyed it. It really did have that Burr Brown sound, which is, sounds like a bit more analog, a bit more bassy. It's a well-placed, well-defined sound. And it was just a pleasant listening session. But also you could hear that it was getting a bit older. And there were some... Uh, in the higher sections, there were some notes missing or lacking. And there was sometimes a bit, well, because it was a bit bassy, uh, sometimes a bit annoying. And that's also something that the Rightmark uh, audio analyzer results show. Not the annoying bit, but that it's a bit more bassy card. These are the results for Rightmark audio analyzer. It gets a good which means that it's a decent card. At the start, the lower frequencies, it's very nice, it's very stable. Only at the higher frequencies, you can see a bit of a wobbly bit. The cutoff point is from 20 kilohertz, and so I'm really satisfied with that one. Now the total harmonic distortion, which was set on the side of ASUS itself, said it was 0,00040%. But in my results, I get something completely different. I get a 0 0,00036. So that's three versus two zeros. Now there's not much of a difference because the results are very good indeed. Now what I also did was I installed a modded driver from Unique Sonar. And just for the fun of it, I did some Rightmark audio analyzer just well to see what happened there. And because I was expecting that the results would be the same. I mean, the hardware stays the same, so the software shouldn't be so, so much of a difference, but I did see something, and that was that the unique sonar drivers actually made the card perform worse, as these results show. Now, I'm not completely sure why that is. I'm going to figure that out, out in another video, but in this kind of situation, the model drivers weren't as good as the drivers by Asus themselves. Now the Asus Xonar D2 is a really nice addition to my, well, collection of sound card. It is really beautiful to see. Also the light effects on the bottom there. It's nice to see the jack plugs, the lighted jack plugs is, well, it's a cool addition. I think a lot more sound cards should have that these days. Even the ones on the motherboards get that because I think it's really cool and really handy because when you're under your desk well fiddling around with those plugs and trying to get it in the right port now you can just see which one you should use but otherwise there are of course downsides to this card well the fact that it's PCI based and uh, there's no front panel connector there's no headphone amp available uh, the GSX is not available and of course the driver support now, of course, there are modded drivers and I never use the front panel anyway, anyway because it will introduce a lot of interference on your audio signal anyway. And uh, no one will ever use GSX these days because, well, EAX isn't supported anyways. Um, maybe if you're building a homebrew HTPC set, this may be an interesting option to use. Otherwise, 
Well, it's only, it cost me only 30 euros, but I have seen sound cards like the Asus RAID Strix Pro or even uh, the Phoebus and for 30, 40, 50 euros. And you should definitely get that one because those cards are a lot better. And that's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd like to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye.